Good morning, everyone. I hope that you have had a great week and welcome to Canaan Church Sri Hatamas. I'm Nicole, and I'm so glad to see that you have decided to join us for our Sunday service this morning. Do take a moment to share our service link to any of your friends or family who you think would really need this boost of hope and encouragement today. Even though we are all attending church remotely from our own homes, we still prioritize the community element of church. We meet every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. for a time of prayer together. So do join us if you haven't already. Also, don't forget that today is Communion Sunday and we will be having our Holy Communion together at the end of the service. So do prepare some bread and juice for it. Before moving on to the worship session and listening to a message this morning, let's read Psalms 89 verse 15 to 18 together. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice in your name all day long. They celebrate your righteousness. For you are their glory and strength, and by your favour you exalt our horn. Indeed, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Amen.
day of November Church. Praise God for this beautiful day. It's a day to worship the Lord together. Together, It's the day to give Him praise. It's the day to glorify His name. It's the day to give Him thanks of all the things that He had done in our lives. And we praise God for this opportunity that we can listen to His word again to sustain us and strengthen us in our journey with Him. And so before we give the rest of our time to our pastor, Daniel, to share us the word of God, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you so much for all the things that you have done in our life. We thank you so much for your faithfulness, your goodness, oh God. We thank you for your protection, oh God. We thank you for the victory that you have given to all of us. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you for your providence, oh God. We thank you of all the things, oh God. And we give you praise. We give you thanks, oh God, of all, of all the things, oh God, that you had uh, that you had given to all of us for this whole week, oh God. We praise you and we continue to uh, to commit our lives to you, oh God, to commit our, our fellowship with you, oh God, in fellowship uh, to, to every one of us, even through this online, oh God. We praise you, oh God, and we pray that uh, whatever we need uh, this, this morning, oh God, may we ask you to minister to each one of us. May we ask you to, 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 uh, give us the concentration, O oh God, that we will receive the things that you have prepared to every one of us, O oh God. We pray, dear Lord, any one of us, O oh God, who are, who are encountering, uh, uh, suffering, who are encountering, uh, encountering pain, O oh God, who are, uh, who has, uh, a sick body, O oh God, this morning. We we ask you to, to, to reach out to them, O oh God, and uh, bring healing to their bones, so God, into their bodies, so God. We thank you so much, oh God. We give you praise, oh God, and even for the, the word that you do, if you prepare to all of us, oh God, prepare our, uh, prepare our hearts, oh God, receptive, oh God, that we will apply it in our whole life, oh God. We thank you so much, oh God. We thank you so much, and all glory belongs to you, Father, this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Good morning, church. Welcome back to Canaan Church Sri Hatamas. I trust that everybody is well and healthy in the Lord. Our God is a good God. Can somebody say Amen? We are already in the month of November and today is Communion Sunday. So at the end of the sharing today, I'd like you to prepare yourselves uh, even as we are going into partaking. Holy Communion. So at this moment, let us just come before His presence even in prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful that you're always good to us. Whatever happens in our lives, dear God, you're always with us. You comfort us, you heal us, and you are always providing for us. Today, dear God, as we come before your presence once again, Lord, we want to look into your precious word. We pray that, dear God, you are going to remove every form of destruction. We pray that you will just help us to be attentive, that our mind, Lord, will be saturated with your precious word. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher today. Minister to us as we commit all this to you in Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. My sharing today is entitled Extravagant Worship. That's right. Extravagant Worship is taken from Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says here, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. That's another translation. The Good News translation, it says this. So then, my friends, because of God's great mercy to us, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to His service and pleasing to Him. This is the true worship that you should offer. Well, we were created to worship God, 
Why? Because God created us to worship Him. And it is His desire to see us express our love towards Him in worship, both individually and corporately. We were made by God and we were made for God. Every human being is destined to worship and has a portion of their humanity reserved for an act of worship. It's how we are wired and it's how we have been created. So to worship God is our highest calling in life. Loving God wholeheartedly can be expressed through our worship. Therefore, it is absolutely crucial for us to understand the power of worship, the extravagant worship that we give to God is really an act of our heart of worship unto Him. And I'd like to share with you today three reasons why we should engage in a life of extravagant worship. Firstly, it's an extravagant worship Creates, creates a positive spiritual atmosphere. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 12 to 14, it says this, And with them 120 priests, sounding with trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass, when the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, that the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud, so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Worship is an essential part of the service. Our very purpose of coming together as a people of God is to worship God in spirit and in truth. So here in 2 Chronicles, we were told that the trumpeters and singers were making one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, that the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud, so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Meaning, God's Shekinah glory and presence will be manifested as we offer our worship to Him. A genuine heart of worship creates a positive spiritual atmosphere. Friends, have you ever been to a major sports or entertainment event? If you have, you would agree with me that the atmosphere is absolutely electrifying. Why? Because in order for the event to be successful, the organizers will spend months or even years to prepare. And the bigger the event, the longer time span is required to ensure that everything will run smoothly. The carnival spirit, together with loud music, creates an atmosphere of excitement and entertainment for everyone who is at the place of event. Similarly, having a positive spiritual atmosphere in the church is extremely important. The level of breakthrough is related to the level of spiritual atmosphere in the church. And this spiritual atmosphere is related to the tangible presence of God. Well, of course, at this moment, we know that we are worshipping online, but even as we are at home, we can create that positive spirit.
spiritual atmosphere as a form of worship unto the Lord. Without the presence of God, everything we do will just be mere good entertainment. And everything that we say might just be another good talk or presentation. So therefore, friends, preparation towards worship is very important. Everyone contributes to the so-called success of an extravagant worship. The second reason is an extravagant worship declares the mighty name of God. In Psalm 96 verses 1 to 6, it says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations. His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before Him. Strength and glory are His sanctuary. True worship is directed toward only one audience, that is, God Himself. And the fruit of our lips is to confess and proclaim His name. And our worship should be an act of adoration towards Him. I remember there was one year when I was in Dubai airport on the way to United States, whereby I witnessed a Muslim man placing a mat and face towards Mecca and worship his God right along the corridors at the busy Dubai airport. No, he was not ashamed of his act. He doesn't even bother as the crowds were passing by him. He was so engrossed in his due diligence to worship his God. And when it's time to worship, it's time to worship to fulfill his religious duty. For us as God's people, I believe that we should seek to please him with our worship. We should not be ashamed of the God that we believe. We seek to bless him, to honor him, to extol him, and to glorify him. All the songs that we sing should be God-centered. It is proclaiming who he is and what he has done. At the same time, we have to recognize that worship is a lifestyle. And therefore, let us, friends, let us, let us declare boldly through our extravagant worship. He is our almighty God. Amen. And the third reason is that an extravagant worship ushers in the presence of God. Psalm 22 verse 3 says, God inhabits in the praises of His people. God finds delight in true worship. God finds delight in true worshippers. And before we are musicians, singers, worship leaders, ministry leaders, or even in any other form of profession, we are first a worshipper. And as worshippers, God is calling us to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to Him. You know, when we worship God, we will be blessed by His presence. And as a result, 
of our worship unto him as a worshiper, we are ushering in the divine presence of God. Yes, our worship ushers in the presence of God. General William Booth once said that if a church was on fire for God, people from miles around would come and see it burn. The vibrancy of our worship should not solely depend on the worship team, but even though they play a very vital part, we thank God for them. We are the main contributors in elevating the intensity of an extravagant worship. And I trust and pray that today you will begin to understand the importance of coming before God in preparation to worship Him. You know, when time is set, 10.30 in our service, let's, let's get ready even five minutes before. And if you can, we encourage you. Early morning, you get ready and prepare yourself, your heart, your body, your spirit, ever ready to worship God. Because when we come before His presence, we are ushering in the presence of God into our midst. We should come with great expectancy with great excitement, with great joy in our hearts. Why? Because an extravagant worship ushers in the presence of God. Now, what happens when God's tangible presence is with us? You know, it is a fact that when we worship, we receive a variety of blessings or benefits and we should expect to receive from God as his word promises and I'd like to share with you here are some of the so-called blessings or benefits the first one is healing everybody enjoys wanting to have healing if they are not well Exodus 23 verse 25 says Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. Then he says, I will take away, I will take away sicknesses or sickness from among you. Somebody say, Amen. You know, God's presence has the purifying, cleansing and healing effect on our lives. And this is can manifest in physical healing. In fact, I've heard of many testimonies without any prayer or laying on of hands. This is simply due to the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit. Second benefit is renewed strength. Isaiah 40 verse 31 tells us this. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. So often when we worship God, our faith will be strengthened and spiritually will be renewed. Worship establishes God's perspectives in our lives and strengthens us in our spirits enabling us to overcome seemingly insurmountable situations. The third benefit is refreshing. You know, our God is a creative God and always do new things. The Bible says in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23, it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. They are new every morning and therefore each time and I repeat Lamentations 3.23 says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and his mercies never come to an end that's right you know they are new every morning you know therefore each time when we worship him 
He will have something new for us. God will refresh us and give us fresh revelation every time we worship Him, provided we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and direct us in worship. Another benefit is holiness. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, it says, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. You know, when we worship God, we will be aware of His holiness. The closer we walk with God in worship, the more He can effect this transformation of holiness in our lives. God wants us to be pure. God wants us to be clean. God wants us to be holy in His presence. And when we come before the Holy God, the Holy Spirit will convict us if there are any areas in our lives that are not right. And He will cleanse us. He will renew us. He will give us a brand new day. And I pray that today as you come before God in worship, believe that God is able to come before, before us. He doesn't condemn us. In fact, He wants us. He draws us into His presence in holiness and make us holy as well. Hallelujah. You know, another benefit is salvation. The Holy Spirit in worship always draws people. And the, something in our spirit is ignited by powerful worship. God often debases a seed of faith that often leads to salvation. We often assume that salvation only occurs in response to the preaching of the Word of God. But many people also testify that they actually gave their lives and their hearts to the Lord during worship. What a great testimony. In fact, there's one, one uh, incident in Acts chapter 16 Verses 25 to 31, if you remember this, when Paul and Silas were in prison, when the jailer and his household were saved, not because of Paul and Silas preaching, but because of the miraculous manifestation of God as a result of worship. Another benefit is spiritual warfare. One of the amazing occurrences which is often demonstrated as a result of worship is when great victories are won in spiritual warfare for individuals as well as for the church. The enemy cannot stand worship. The enemy cannot stand strong when the name of the Lord is lifted in worship. In fact, there was one remarkable a story, an example that is found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when Jehoshaphat and the people of Israel faced the vast combined armies of the Amorites, the Moabites, and the Meobites, Meonites. Jehoshaphat heard from the Lord that the battle is not yours, but God's, in verse 15. And he sent the singers ahead to go out at the head of the army. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord caused the enemy to turn on each other, and a mighty victory was won without the Israelites even having to fight. That's how powerful worship is. You know, when we worship and spend time in God's presence, he will supernaturally change our circumstances and bring victory to our lives. You know, the last but not least benefit is prophecy. When we worship God in spirit and in truth, we create an atmosphere where the anointing and the power of God 
can manifest in the form of prophecy. You know, there are many examples in scriptures where the musicians and singers were called to worship and minister even before the prophets in order to release a prophetic anointing as the Holy Spirit brought revelation to the prophets. You can find in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5, as well as 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15. And this is presented in much greater detail even in chapter 10. But we should expect God to reveal His character and will be to us in prophecy when we worship Him. God is always longing to speak to His people and worship places us in a realm where God can move. In conclusion, what is your purpose of worshipping God today? Is it because you want more from God? Or is it because you want more of God? We should desire more of God. Because when we desire more of Him, we will be more like Him. An extravagant worship should not just be an experience, but it should be an encounter with the true and living God. All these are made possible through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Saviour, Lord and Master. You know, our worship will move on to a higher level when our focus is on God and God alone. Worship is not an act of getting, but it's an act of giving. It is not an act of selfishness, but it is an act of selflessness. There's this pastor, Pastor Jeff, Syverson, he quoted this, and I think it's very appropriate. He says, don't miss the opportunity to worship Jesus. Focus on Jesus, not yourself, and find joy in His presence. He is worthy of our worship in its many forms and expressions. And last but not least, I'd like to share with you this word that came from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. It says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips, then confess His name. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Lord, we are so thankful that we can come before your presence in this manner, just as we are, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray that, dear God, you will help us to always understand the importance of extravagant worship as a lifestyle. We pray that, dear God, as we dedicate and surrender our lives to you. That God, our worship, indeed will be a sweet aroma, an incense that is reaching out to you. Pray that God, you will continue to help us in our daily lives to see the importance of coming before your presence in worship. Lord, every day in our lives, help us to make it as a lifestyle. Whatever we do, whatever we say, Lord, make it as a form of worship. And we pray that today we want to thank you, reminding us again about this importance of worship before your presence. We were created to worship you and help us, O God, to please you because it is our desire, wanting more of you. Lord, we pray and ask you that your this heart of worship will always be upon each and every one of our lives. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Today is Communion Sunday. 
and we want to come before His presence as a form of worship unto Him, even as we partake this Holy Communion. We thank the Lord Jesus once again for what He has done more than 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, sacrificing His life for humanity. And today, as we have accepted Him, accepted him as our personal Lord and Saviour, we thank God for forgiveness, we thank God for salvation. And even for us, for those who are wounded, for those who are hurt, for those who require healing, we also believe that there is healing in the atonement. So by faith, may I encourage you to come, believing that God is able to touch and heal you. We want to thank God for the bread that represents the broken body of Jesus and the cup the blood of Jesus. And as we come before Him, let us believe by faith and let us just appreciate the fellowship, the communion, and the worship that we are going to have with our Lord Jesus as well as with one another. Let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank You. Communion reminds us of Your love for us. Communion reminds us of what your son Jesus has done on the cross. The bread that represents a broken body and the cup, the blood of Jesus. And dear God, today as we come, we come with this heart of worship. We come with this heart of sincerity and attitude of gratitude. That God, you're going to bless this emblem as we partake. For those who have needs in their life, especially who requires healing, we pray in Jesus' name, as we partake, you are going to touch and heal them. Bless this emblem even right now as we partake in Jesus' name. Let's partake the bread together. Right now, let's partake the cup. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord for a short while. Hallelujah. Just thank Him. Thank Him for salvation. Thank Him for His presence. Thanking Him for healing upon our lives. Thanking Him for protection, especially from COVID-19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. We give you thanks. We give you glory. And Lord, continue to go with us, we pray, with your presence, trusting and believing that indeed, dear God, you are always be with your people, ever willing to provide, ever willing to protect, and ever willing to continue to be with us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. When the music fades, all is stripped away and I simply come Longing just to bring something that's a fruit that will bless you